Hi, I'm Ryan from eBikeaholic. I found a really easy and inexpensive way to mount up all of my cargo accessories using some really powerful neodymium magnets. Let's take a look at what I did and see if something like this might work for you. The hardest part about bike commuting or car replacement is figuring out what to do with your cargo. So we really need to keep this as simple and convenient as possible. So the main premise is that this is a one and a half inch neodymium cup magnet. I think it's either 0.2 or 0.3 inches thick. And I just bolted it directly onto the rack. So that's semi-permanently on there. And the J-hooks just hook around here. And you have a stripe plate on whatever bag or basket you're trying to attach on here. And as long as the, the strike plate is steel and it's touching the magnet, you have a nice solid connection. These are really strong magnets. I think this is a 90 or 95 pound pull force. And you can just feel it. It's, it's not going anywhere when it's on there. This is just a cheap Schwinn rack that bolts onto the seat tube. I think it was about 15 bucks. I'm not really sure. It was a Father's Day gift, so figured I'd go with it. If anything, I may want to swap it out with one of the ones that has little legs that can be attached to here, and I'll just bolt it down to that piece there, and that'll make it a little bit stronger. I think this one's rated for maybe 25 pounds. Could probably do a little bit more than that, but you could feel it kind of gets a little wonky when it when there's a load on it. But ultimately, the setup that I'm working on, I ordered some more magnets that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put another one on this. This is the Blackburn Deluxe Local. And so this setup can work on just about any rack as long as it has a 3 8 inch tubing. The J-hooks that I'm using have a half inch opening. It's a little bit wider than a half inch, so they fit on there nice. I guess let's start by taking a look at my favorite which is this sunlight basket. This one, the basket's a little pricey. This is a $40 basket. But the main premise of what I'm doing here is just got some 4-inch J-hooks and a 3-inch mending plate as a strike plate. So you just hook the J-hooks and the plate connects right there to the magnet. And as you can see, that's a nice solid connection. That's not going anywhere. What I like the most about this basket is it's really lightweight and it's pretty convenient that it just kind of, you just need a few bungees to hold in whatever's in there. And it's just always open. It, it fits my helmet perfectly. And I have this little nine inch Molly pouch that you could just throw in a water bottle or your phone, whatever it is that you don't feel like hanging on to. And of course, we could always have a bike light attached to it, so it's always ready. This one is USB rechargeable. Then when you need to swap it out, pop it up, bring the hook out, replace it with the next one. So the latest one that I just made is one of my favorites. This is a Blackburn saddlebag, and these are pretty pricey, I think. I got this from a thrift store for like five bucks and it was like new condition. But I think these are maybe 60 bucks on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. But for 60 you get, uh, I believe it comes in a two pack. So you can essentially, you know, they're, they're designed to go on the side here. Now, I do occasionally use saddlebags on the side. I'm just not a huge fan of it because for food you can't really fit much. It's just not wide enough. And... I don't like the idea of having a lot of weight on one side, so I try to balance it out. You know, with bicycles, it's very important to be balanced. So in general, I do prefer just using the trunk bags, and this obviously is not designed 
to be a, drunk, a trunk bag. This is designed as a saddle bag. But I was able to adapt it because these clips are really perfect. They're designed to go on that 3 8 inch tubing on the rack. And they clip right in. And then I just put some more strike plates. This one has a little magnet inside there, which I don't think I really needed. But um, it got the strike plate to come up flush, so I figured why not. So you just feel those hooks pop right in. And the strike plate hits the magnet. And that bad boy isn't going anywhere. So this does have a plastic back plate, which is nice. And it comes with it comes with a nice interior that has like pen pockets and everything, but you're able to zip that out that's removable. And so what I did was I just made with some coroplast, I made a little tray that fits nicely to kind of hold it in place and just makes it easy to just stuff things in there. So one of the reasons I prefer to use this bag instead of a typical trunk bag is the size. Most trunk bags for some reason, well I guess for aerodynamics and whatnot, they make them only I believe eight inches or usually seven and a half inches wide. So which makes sense, you know, you want your bike to be narrow, but at the same time, you can't fit takeout. So if you're picking up dinner, usually those takeout bins are uh, 10 by 10 squares. Or you can get a, this thing could fit a small pizza box, a 10 inch pizza box. So this one is nice for picking up food. Or, you know, if you want a laptop and whatnot and you don't want to have it on the side, it's just nice to keep the balance, to keep everything right behind you. Then I made a tray that's a little bit bigger. So if I'm wanting to do an Uber Eats delivery or if I'm picking up for, for entertaining and I need to pick up, uh, you know, a 13 inch. Well, actually, so this bag here is 12 inch by 15 inch. So I could fit, I think, three 12 inch pizzas inside there. But the way that I designed it is I made this tray. So I made this tray you could check out my DIY. I made this tray to have a, a metal basket on it and it just turned out it was just way too heavy and especially with this rack it got it felt really wonky so I took the basket it was basically just sides that went around so I found that those were unnecessary so I took the basket off and just converted this into a tray and same concept the J hooks wrap around there there's a steel mending plate right back there which hits the rack and you can see that's not going anywhere and even if it did for some reason if it did decide to pop up if you hit a pothole or something it's just gonna fall right back onto the magnet and if it's weighted that's gonna make it hold you know when you have a load on there it's gonna hold to the magnet even better so then here's another of the same one and a half inch neodymium magnet so that now I could have multiple attachments to where I think I'll get a larger pizza bag and I just have two mending plates. I didn't really need to go wide with these, I just already had them so I figured I'd use them. And this one is just coroplast and there's more coroplast on the inside. Uh, this bag was just a really inexpensive, I think it was 10 or 15 bucks on Amazon um, insulated bag. It's 15 by 12, which was the, happened to be the same size as my tray, so I figured I'd, I'd run with that size. And I have an old license plate underneath there that bolts in between. It's sandwiched between two pieces of coroplast. Give it a little more rigidity. So the way that this one works is it just slides under these. I didn't cut these ones. These are the 4-inch J bolts. And you just slide it under there. And you could hear it snap into the magnet. Those mending plates, the steel plates, just snap right into the magnet. So again, that's not going anywhere. And then when you're ready to, you're at the restaurant or you get back, pop it off.
pop it off, and you're good to go. So the way that I had originally designed this tray is I had two bolts here and here that went directly into the rack and I had some wing nuts on the bottom so you're able to just kind of drop the bolts in, tighten the wing nuts. That was really secure but it was kind of annoying to have to get the wing nuts off of there. Wing nuts are not really the greatest for this application when it's when you have vibrations the wing nuts tend to fall off so you have to constantly check them and then you know if you're, you're either carrying this dead weight if you're not using it or you have to deal with taking it on and off and, and wiggling the bolts in and out of those holes each time you want to swap out to a different cargo accessory. So now I got it set up to where it can easily just pop on and off. Again, this is just some coroplast that I taped together with duct tape and then bolted to the coroplast on the bottom. So this one is insulated and really this is ideal for picking up food. But it's a little bit on the big side so unless I know that I'm picking up a, this is a 12 inch by 15 inch, so if I'm picking up a 12 inch pizza that's a perfect fit inside there. If I'm picking up four takeout boxes, this would be a good fit. Otherwise, for the most part, for a local pickup, I'll probably just use this guy. And then, of course, if you're a little hesitant about the idea of a magnet doing the, doing the whole job, there's always bungees. So I got all these little mini bungees, and I have one that's already connected at all times to this tray and within each bag I usually keep one or two bungees just in case I want to just kind of secure it all down and be extra sure. I haven't really been using too many side pieces but I figured I'd mention this if you are into that. What I did with this one because this is designed to mount with um, like pipe clamps and you're supposed to semi-permanently mount it right there with your pipe clamps but again I didn't like the idea of constantly carrying around this dead weight this one is kind of pricey so I just took these curtain hooks that I had laying around and bent them down a little bit straightened them out and bolted them on with some metal mending plates and they just hook on there real nice and then I just put a, um, a GoPro bolt you could just use any little screw or bolt with some wing nuts to just lock them into place and then you'll always have this available to pop out as a pop out basket this is also from sunlight but again I really haven't been too big of a fan of these lately just because of the imbalance that it causes I just really like having all my weight directly behind me so for this one I think it makes more sense if you if you have two if you want two saddlebags or side baskets that makes a little more sense otherwise I prefer to use the trunk cargo or of course a trailer. This one's a Molly day pack that I converted into a saddlebag. Same deal as that basket. Just put some curtain hooks right here bolted to the straps. Those hook right there on the side of the rack and I put in a, those little GoPro bolts with a wing nut just to hold that in place and then just I would wrap a bungee cord around it just to hold it down from flapping around. One of the nice things about this bag is that these shoulder straps can just buckle in with a quick release so it can become a backpack and then you can add with all these Molly straps you could add as many attachments as you desire. So this one I haven't gotten set up as a trunk bag just yet. 
these were a little too wide on here, so these hooks, I could just move these hooks in a little bit to get them to hook on. Down here, if I move them in, uh, maybe an inch or two, they'll hook on there. And then I'll need to figure out a, um, a mending plate on the back of here to snap onto that magnet. I'm really not a fan of backpacks in general. I took a motorcycle safety course years ago and he showed us, the instructor showed us pictures of what happens when you go down and you land on your back while you're wearing a backpack. I already have enough back problems. I don't need to deal with that. So all the more reason to carry everything on your bike. And that's why I'm a huge fan of trunk bags and trailers. While we're at it, might as well take a look at some of these lock mounts that I have. So this is the mount that came with this kryptonite U-lock and it originally came with a, a, br a bracket that would go onto the uh, top tube or a seat tube, but the bracket broke on me, which turned out to be a blessing. So I just got some cable ties on here to hold it onto the side of the rack and I just slide it in there. So this way I know that my lock is always with me ready to go. Easy to just pop it on and off when you when you need to lock it up. Then I also have this. I just am in the habit since my motorcycle days to always have one of these available. Whether you want to hook your helmet up to it or whatever it is, if you got a jacket or something. And I would never use only a cable lock unless the bike is always in my sight. So for example, if I'm just stopping at a restaurant and there's a lot of people walking around but it's always within my sight that would be a good option it's just a little bit sometimes it's a little bit simpler or sometimes maybe you're, you have to come up to a tree or something if there's no bike lock and this u-lock won't fit so that's where the cable lock might be a short-term quick solution also want to point out this mirror real quick this is the CRG Arrow I bought this for my motorcycle probably about seven or eight years ago and I can't say enough good things about these things it's a convex glass so you get a nice wide angle you can see everything behind you I don't feel the need to have two of them just having one on the left hand is enough because usually you should be on the right side of the road at least here in the US you know whatever side of the road you're on and there is a more affordable version of these I haven't tried them yet I don't know if it's as good it may not be as good quality but it's significantly less expensive. These are kind of pricey. I think it's about, I don't know, maybe 90 or $100. Um, so I probably would not, if I didn't have one, I, I don't know if I would pay full price for that. I'd probably try the inexpensive ones, which I think were maybe 25 for a two-pack. But just having a mirror is so critical because you should always be doing shoulder checks and looking over your shoulder before you change lanes or whenever you feel the presence of a larger vehicle near you but just having the mirror there to take that quick glance before you do your shoulder check is really critical when you're riding in traffic. Let me know what y'all think. I'd really like to hear about what kind of cargo you're using or if you have any DIYs you'd like to share with, with everyone please let us know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful please do me a favor and click the like button and subscribe. I'll see you soon. Thank you very much.